Welcome to the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and or good evening to you all around the world. This is Reverend Essie of New Birth Ministries Church Online wishing you victory, Yeshua, love, joy, peace, wit, wealth, success, patience, virtue, good health, money, mercy, grace, support, rock, wisdom, positivity, abundance, prosperity, greatness, and Yahweh. Church Online every Sunday at 10 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And for those who cannot attend the usual brick-and-mortar service at the time, for various reasons, such as sick and shut-in, transportation troubles, and so forth, know that we're praying for you and that God would send you favor quickly. Also remember, troubles don't last always, my friend. You have the victory. Amen. And check out our new website at RevSE.org. God bless. everybody. It helps to have the microphone on. Amen. <laughs> How are you this morning? God is good. God is good. I hope everything's been going fine with you. Everything's going great with me. God has been blessing me every day. He blesses me in ways unimaginable, ways that I don't even deserve. And I'm sure a lot of us can probably say the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is still on the throne. Amen. Jesus' blood still works. His name still works. We are covered by his blood as long as we are children of the Most High God. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Today, I'm going to be taking the word from Hebrews. If you want to turn your swords to Hebrews chapter 9 and get your, get your, your swords, hope you have them, your Bible, and get your drink and your snack or whatever you're going to get. Amen. And sit back and listen to what the Lord has to say to us today. And it's going to be on the perfect sacrifice. Jesus gave us the perfect sacrifice. There is no other. Amen. So let's start this with prayer and invite the Holy Spirit of God to use me to tell us what God has to say. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for today. We bless you. Baruch Atah Adonai. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. There is nobody above you. There's nobody that can take your place. You take care of us in our times of need, whenever we're lonely, when we need somebody to talk to. Whenever we need food, whenever we need something taken care of, um, whenever we want an answer to something that's been bothering us, you have all the answers. You're omniscient. Hallelujah. Omnipresent. Hallelujah. Therefore, when anything tries to bother us, we just give it to you. We call on that mighty name of Jesus because you and the devil can't live in the same place. And we thank you for that. Amen. Hallelujah. We lift up all the prayer requests and everything um, that we receive from people throughout this past week, um, people who are um, have lost loved ones, need financial blessings and healings, people who um, are at their last end of the rope and they, they feel like there's no other hope. The people who have no hope, Father God, use us to let them know, to teach them that there is hope. There is a man God named Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who cares, who loves them, who wants to answer their prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the healings you've given us, Lord God, for waking us up in the morning, keeping us during the night as our bodies slept. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, use me today. Use me today 
to say something to your people, to God's people, that you want them to hear. There are so many people who are trying to look for different powers, more power, and and people who think that they still have to sacrifice, and they don't realize that they're wrong. And Lord, help me today to teach them that they're wrong and not doing it your way, maybe their way, but not your way. Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross and shedding your blood for us, just for us. You redeemed us. You brought us back. You bought us back. Hallelujah. And we'll never let the devil touch us again because he's underneath our feet and we have the power because of you. And we thank you for that. In your holy name, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Thank Jesus for what he has done for us. We should thank him every day, all day. Every, the Bible even says meditate on him. That means, you know, even when you're, when you're washing dishes, think about him. When you're making up your bed, think about him. When you're at work, think about him. Amen. Hallelujah. Think about him at all times. And especially in days and times like today where people are just flabbergasted and they don't know what to do. There's so many different things happening in the world today. People are shocked. They go into shock. They don't know what to do, especially with all uh, the, uh, the health things that we're, that we're experiencing this day. I know myself, I'm getting a lot of calls, um, uh, well, some calls, you know, and emails from people who are uh, just desperate. They don't know what to do they, about, the, about the shots and things like that, you know. And I tell them, hey, you know, uh, if it doesn't ask you to worship anybody or anything and it doesn't ask you to bow down, Okay, then it's a typical shot, you know. I mean, uh, but you pray about it. Pray about it, take it to the Lord, and wait on him. Wait for his answer. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 9. And I'll be starting from verse 11. Uh, Verse 11, and it says, it reads like this. I hope everybody's there. God bless you. Hallelujah. God is good. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls or goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator, remember that word mediator, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that they, that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the uh, testator lives. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop um, and sprinkled both the book and all the people. These are things that Moses did, okay, pre Jesus. God bless Moses. Amen. Saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, be sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle with all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, 
which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, remember that word, often, as the high priest enters into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Nobody else would do that for us. Hallelujah. Let me put parentheses around himself. Amen. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, through this the judgment. Last verse. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I'm going to jump over to right now. I'll do it now before I get into the word. Um, uh, 10, chapter 10. Look at verse 11. Chapter 10, verse 11, 12, and 13, right? And it says, And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away, never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, once and forever, Amen. He sat down on the right hand of God. The the right hand of God is power, and the left hand of God is the law. Amen. This is why whenever we're, uh, I believe, and I've heard other scholars believe, uh, say that when you're um, healing, you want to heal somebody, you want to touch somebody or whatever, do it with your right hand. Okay. Um, We're laying hands on, as the Bible says, but the right hand, power. Amen. Uh, From henceforth, expecting till his enemies, he made his footstool. And you can believe as long as you are a follower of the Most High God, your enemies are your, your footstool. They're underneath your feet. No matter what they look like, no matter what they've been doing, your enemies are underneath your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil make you think anything different because they are under your feet. There is nothing, nobody greater than the Christ in you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to start with verse 11 of chapter 9. But Christ became a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. See, when Jesus Christ came we're made by hands, okay? Our tabernacles are made by hands. Our churches, whatever we you know, uh, uh, we go into, our temples are made by man's hands. God, uh, Jesus Christ, is not made by man's hands. It says by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. This is the same, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats, not of calves. In his own blood, he entered in one time. Now, see, years ago, when the priests used to enter the temple, um, they had to uh, use the blood of uh, uh, lambs or whatever, and they had to slice their throat, and they had to do all these different rituals that they had um, to offer uh, as, as a sacrifice, okay? Uh, there had to be an animal to sacrifice his life, okay, for the sins of man, okay, this for the sins of Israel. Their, their their priests had to go in and do different things in the temple. Okay, they, as you see, it says, verse 13, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the uncle, sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more would Jesus' offering do? There are people out there right now today that are giving offer, calling themselves giving offerings. And um, it, this might sound gory. But those people who kill chickens and offer the blood, those people right now who are killing bulls and and rams and goats and lambs who are offering the blood are out of sync. They are wrong. They are operating under the 
spirit of error. The last thing you want to do is to be under the spirit of error. There is no animal now. Now, maybe in the Old Testament. See, what's happening is a lot of people are still living in the Old Testament. Instead of going, going, going over to the New Testament, the Jesus Testament, okay, where, where Jesus was born and showed us how to do things a better way. See, Jesus didn't cancel out the law. He made it better. See, because before, as you can see in, in uh, chapter eleven, uh, chapter ten, verse eleven, it says that every priest stands daily ministering. See, every day, these priests had to do the same thing over and over. When it was time, they had to they had to take care of the temple. Okay, it was a, it was a thing that man had to do to please God. Okay, you hear me? There are things man had to do. Are we talking about God's grace here now, right? In the New Testament, there are things uh, man had man had to do to please his God, who led him by day and by night. Amen. Amen. God, they, he loved God. If you want to serve God, you got to do what God tells you to do. And there are people out there right now who are doing their own thing. They think they could do whatever they want to do, and they will not be successful. They will not be victorious. They will not overcome their enemies because they won't do it God's way. It's God's way or no way. <clears throat> okay. So as I was saying, the people out there who are, who are, uh, you have the witches and the warlocks and you have these, these special groups that meet in caverns and, and you know, and, and uh, it, it's a, it's a serious thing. And they're still offering blood. Now, some of them are offering blood um, out of ignorance. Some people who are in those old religions or whatever, and they still think that you have to do that, that's called the sin of ignorance, as I was telling you, which I believe is in Leviticus. Um, and there's a, something called the offering of the sin of uh, ignorance. You know, uh, and, and they're operating in air. Okay, you no longer, no animal in this world has to give up their life for a person's sins. Those days are gone. Amen. Amen. There's still people that are doing that. And then there's other people that are doing that, um, offering blood offerings, um, as you might have heard, as with, like, for instance, the Mayans, and they're not the only ones who have blood offerings. They literally kill humans. And there are evil people, wicked, wicked people out there who are killing innocent children as an offering, not to God. Not to any God, but to Satan himself, because he has fooled them into thinking that they have power. They with him, they would have power. You could beat those Christians. <laughs> You're better than those Christians. You have power. You made a cup float across the across the living room. You have power. The devil's a liar. Don't listen to him. You do not have power. You do not have power like Jesus Christ's power. And if you're operating that way, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell forever for an eternity. Burn forever where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth because Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. Nothing else is needed. And if people are out there doing that stuff, they're working for, they're working for nothing. Amen. And with Jesus as my Savior, I don't have to work. <laughs> you know, you don't have to work. You know, we say we're working for the kingdom because we're going around telling people that we enjoy it. It's not a task. Amen. Don't you enjoy telling people about the love of Jesus Christ? And if they don't want to hear it, just the Bible says, wipe the dust from your feet and keep on stepping. You can't make people turn to Jesus. You can't make people like you. Maybe they'll listen to somebody else. Maybe they won't listen to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, you know, Christ, you, you do know that Christ is not Jesus' last name, right? That's why in, in, in Hebrew, to Yeshua HaMashiach, that's Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Savior. Amen? Jesus is his name. Christ is his title. How much more shall the blood of Christ, that means your Savior, the one who died on a cross and shed his blood, who through the eternal spirit, eternal spirit is the Holy Spirit, God's spirit. Amen? 
through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. Jesus was the only thing, the only person who was spotless, who was sinless. He was tempted in all points. Everything you can think of right now, Jesus was tempted in. There was nothing that he wasn't tempted in while he was here on earth. He did it for you. He did it for me. Amen. He was tempted in all points. Amen. But he did not. Now, you're going to get tempted. You can't stop. You can't stop temptation from coming. But falling for it is the sin. You're not, you're not, you're not a sinful person because uh, temptation came to you. That's normal. Temptation came to Jesus. But did he fall for it? Do you fall for it? Don't blame God. Jesus is going to tell you one day too. I didn't fall for it. You didn't have to. That you didn't follow my example. I didn't fall for it. And you shouldn't have fell for it either. The wiles of the devil. Amen. Okay. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your? Con- how much more would would the Spirit of God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The blood of Jesus. Purge your conscience. Change your conscience. Give you a better heart, a better way of thinking, a cleaner way to do things, spiritual way to do things. Amen? Consecrated, set aside, and glad to be so. You're a child of the Most High God. You shouldn't be like the world. You shouldn't want to do anything the world does. Amen? Hallelujah. You're cleansed. By Christ, who was sinless. You serve a living God. Your God's not dead. Everybody else died. Amen? Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, Yogi, Mary Baker Eddy, Joseph Smith, amen? Martin Luther, he was great, but he's dead. Krishna, and even Moses and David. They all died. Jesus still lives. Amen. So if there's anybody out there worshiping dead saints, you're in error. You are in error. Amen. Amen. Something to think about. Amen. And then it says in verse 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. A mediator. He comes in between us and God. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's about he comes in between us. Jesus is the mediator. There is nobody else that can take you to heaven. There is nobody else, nothing else, no stone, no rock, no statue, no dead saint that is going to pray for you, for you, to God. None. Jesus is the mediator. We should be praying to Jesus. Amen. And Jesus, the Bible says he sits on the right hand side of God making intercession for us. Look, watch. Okay. Thank you, Lord. If Jesus is making intercession for for us, right, who else do you need? Why else would you try anybody else? Why pray to St. Bobby, Ricky, Matthew, and John? We don't need them. They can't help us. They can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Jesus, we should be praying to Jesus because Jesus is the mediator. One man, one mediator between us and God. He takes care of the business. Jesus is big enough. He takes care of your business. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a mediator of the New Testament that by means of death, And this is how he did it, which nobody else would do. He died for you. Jesus died. Okay? But here's the catch. Unlike the others that we mentioned, Jesus rose back up. Jesus is alive, sitting on the right-hand side of God. Nobody else is sitting on the right-hand side of God. So if, if, if you out there have anybody else sitting by God, Sipping tea with him, you're in error. 
It's all about our God. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, it says, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inherit, inheritance. Amen. We are now in God's New Testament, the Jesus Testament, and because of him, we can receive his promise of eternal inheritance. You don't have to go to hell and burn for life. Jesus, I can't understand why people would even want to be, why people are even interested in evil things when God is so good. Now, you say you love the Lord, amen? You say you love Jesus. You say you're a Christian, but you like evil things. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Amen? You can't serve both. And don't think you're doing it in secret. Some people think that they're doing their evil in secret and nobody else knows. God knows. And he will bring you out. Amen. Serve God. Be clean. Amen. Receive his eternal inheritance. How do they say? Oh, rep him. <laughs> rep God. Amen. Rep the kingdom of God. Let people see that you're a representation of the kingdom of God. Why are, you know, only evil people are ashamed of God. Only people who have a spot of evil in them or sometimes a basket full or sometimes a ton of evil in them don't want anybody to know that they worship God. And for the life of me, I don't understand uh, besides the fact that they're double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Either you're on a Lord's side or you're not. Make up your mind. And then you have these... these um, uh, Christians, undercover Christians or whatever, they go around, they say they're Christian, but they're doing other things. They're watching everybody else and at the same time not living the life, spending too much time watching other people instead of living the life. Amen? You are not, you know what? There's going to be a lot of people that's going to get to heaven. They're going to get to the pearly gates, amen, and and, and, and they're going to say, well, Jesus, can I come in now? And Jesus is going to say, get away from me. I don't even know you. Y'all, you worshipped everything but me. <laughs> Can you hear him? Can you hear him telling some people? You wor Please, don't even try that. Don't insult my intelligence. You worshipped everything but me. You, you wore things on your clothes and didn't even have, a, wouldn't wear scripture to save your soul. You had pictures and music, and you had um, uh, bands named, even, I hate to say this, but even some churches, you had, took the cross down off of your church? You were ashamed of me? Or you were trying to please man? And now you're coming saying, Jesus, can I come in? Put it this way, guys. What do you think Jesus is going to say? We have to make up our minds. To serve him. Amen. Amen. For verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Um, Jesus, if you want a testimony, you have to die. And I know some people are like, hmm, what does she mean by that? The old man has to die. As long as you continue in your old self, doing your old things, having your, your old way, walking in your old way, you are not going to be a good testimony for the kingdom of God, for Jesus Christ. You're not. And then some people wonder why they, they're, they, nothing good happens to them. And some people say their luck goes bad. You know, they never have. Because you, you can't be victorious walking with the devil. Some people think they're cool. They think, well, I have the power, and I can do this, and I can do that because Satan said so. Satan don't like you either. <laughs> Be careful. He's a liar. Well, put it this way. Only a fool 
would believe a liar. So these people that think they have these weird powers, you're a fool. I see you as a fool. They're fools. Amen. If Jesus has 100% power, why would you choose anything that has 20 and sometimes less than that? I want it all. I'm not settling for less, y'all. And don't you settle for less either. Settle for Jesus Christ. Amen. The man that hung on a cross and shed his blood and cried and everything for us. Got whipped with a cat and nine tail. Got in, got talked about, dogged. They stole his clothes while they was killing him. While they were, while they were half killing him. They gambled on his clothes and put a crown of thorns. How many of you out there received roses from a loved one or something, the kind of roses that have thorns on them? Did you ever get stuck by one of them bad boys, by one thorn or maybe two or three? He had a crown of thorns placed and pushed upon his head. And God only knows how many times they scooted it around and everything, and it just ripped across his skin for you. And then you're going to sit there and tell people, I'm not ready yet. Well, Jesus didn't call me. <laughs> I still have time. <laughs> no, you don't still have time. You better accept him now while you can. Because if he comes like in the next hour or tonight, well, everybody say, you're done. Sayonara. You didn't make it. You're not going to make it. Don't play with God. Amen. It says, for when Moses had spoken um, every every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet. Moses had to do all this stuff. It was laborious. Is that, the, is that a word? It was laborious. Okay. They had to do a lot of stuff back then. They just didn't get an attache case and Stacey Adams shoes and stand up in a pool pit and crack jokes. <laughs> They just didn't do that. They had a lot to do. Amen. Saying, this is the blood of the testament which God has enjoined to you, unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Does that sound to you like he had time to go shopping for a nice Daisy Adams shoes? No. No. Nowadays, we spend too much time on junk. Amen? And verse 23, and almost all things were by the law uh, are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there's no remission. Without Jesus shedding his blood, and he knew it, Jesus is love. He did it for you and me because he loves us. Don't let anybody tell you he doesn't. Jesus shed his blood. Look, some of us won't even give up money. Some of us won't tithe to save our soul. Some people won't tithe. They won't donate nothing. They won't buy a loaf of bread, nothing. Jesus shed his blood for us. You can't get any deeper than that. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no forgiveness. Hey, if he wouldn't have did that, none, all of us would have went to hell. <laughs> Isn't that a reason to give him thanks? If he didn't do that, all of us would have went to hell. Amen. And verse 23 says, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Whatever happens down here is only a little bit of what's going on in heaven. Like I tell people, the blues, reds, and yellows you see down here have nothing to do with the blues, reds, and yellows in heaven. We are only a a, a shape. We are only a, a piece of what heaven is. Amen. A shadow of what heaven is. So if you're kind of enjoying yourself down here, go to heaven with me. (laughs) Amen. Go with me. I know I'm going. Amen. For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but the heaven itself, a heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often Okay, and what they're saying here is all the things that the priest had to do in the Old Testament over and over and over and over throughout all the years that go from Genesis to the end of the Old Testament, they had to keep doing it over and over and over. And Jesus made it so easy for us that you only have to do it one time. 
All you have to do is accept him as your Savior. Amen? One time. And it's done. Amen? You don't have to you don't have to go and slice a, a lamb's neck or a bull's neck every time you sin. Wouldn't that be something? Think of I can't even imagine it. Wouldn't it be something if we had to go kill an animal every time we sinned? We wouldn't be really, there wouldn't be nobody we'd all be vegetarian. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everybody would be a vegetarian. There would be no be no more animals left. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Nor yet that we should um, offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away, underline this part of the sentence, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Nobody greater. That's why the song says, nobody greater than you, there's nobody. I looked all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. There is nobody you can look all over the world. You're not going to find anybody better than Jesus Christ. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, you die one time. Now, I will quickly bring up something that I brought up online the other day for these people who are dying. And, uh, of course, I I pray for everybody who experienced um, a a final death of a loved one. But for these people who are allegedly, quote, unquote, dying and being brought back to life, Okay, by Narcan. Um, I want you. I want you to think about this. Um, we only die one time. Only Jesus came back to life. This is how slick the devil is, right? And in fact, it's the devil that caused them to die in the first place. When you think about it, okay. And then they're brought back to life. Is it them? I'm just going to throw this out to you guys. Is it the same person, or is it something else? You know, the devil and his demons, the demons are waiting to take a body. They're waiting to take over. And if I believe, and, and I, I was talking to a couple pastor friends of mine, too, and, and uh, we talked on the phone, some pop talked on the phone, and some people um, messaged me. And, and, and one said to me specifically, my girl, Pastor Sheila Davis, God bless her, love her. And she was saying that if a person is unsaved, that leaves a question mark. You know what I mean? If they're unsaved... And they don't have. They didn't accept Jesus Christ as their savior. It's, I, they're done. Amen. So that's why I'm saying to people right now: Are you saved? Are you saved? These people that are dying and coming back may not be who you think they are. Now, I'm not saying that to put fear into anybody. Amen. But if they're unsaved, okay. And and I even even someone I know uh, close to me even said that um, they I think when when your brain when you die I think your brain has ten minutes or something so many minutes before you're totally dead. And I'm just throwing it out to you guys, okay? You can get in touch with me later and let me know how you feel about that. But it's something to think about, okay? Okay, what if they die and they're not saved? Okay, what then? You don't know what's going to happen to you. Are you saying, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you want the enemy to take over your mind, your soul, or your body? Do you want your soul to scream in eternity, in hell, burning, suffering? Or do you want to be free in Christ Jesus? Amen. If you want to be saved and you want the Savior... Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, to cover you with his blood and to take care of all your business for you and to forgive you of your sins. For the re- he shed his blood, as in verse 23, for the re- remission of your sins. Just say this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I love you. 
I accept you as my Savior, and I thank you for what you did just for me. Amen. Amen. You ask him to forgive you of your sins, right? Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Accept him as your Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Now go find a Bible-believing, if it's a a mortar, brick and mortar, if it's online, if it's on a street corner with a microphone and a speaker, (laughs) if it's a radio, okay, if it's your neighbor, if it's the city mission, Find people who love the Lord and teach the unadulterated word of God. Amen? And learn of him. Now that you ask God to forgive you, God has forgiven your sins as far as the east is from the west. Amen? They're gone. Let them go. Them be gone. Don't let anybody else bring them up to you. And if somebody does bring it up to you, just say, that was the old me. I'm sorry, excuse me, you're not talking. That was the old me. I'm different. And if they don't believe you, so what? You know who you are, amen? <laughs> Anywho, um, God is good. Go find a Bible-believing church that teaches the word and learn of him. Hallelujah, God is good. So thank you to everybody that came on today. Uh, send this out um, on Facebook, of which I'm dwindling down. I'm, I'm shutting down a couple of things that I have on Facebook, and there's a reason. Okay, God told me to clean it up. Clean it up and get serious, right? Let's, let's get rid of some things and, and just concentrate on him. Amen. Magnify the Lord with me. Amen. So I have uh, links out there. I'm on YouTube. I'm out there. I'm out there so much. I've been teased about being out there so much. You know, as long as it's for the kingdom of heaven, I'm cool. Amen. Amen. So thanks for coming on, everybody. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Give you his grace, which is outstanding. Hallelujah. There's none like him. And definitely bring you peace. Hallelujah. I pray peace over everybody on here because the devil knows his time is short and he's trying to mess up everybody that he can. But he can't get you because you're not going to let him, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Reverend S.E. signing off. God bless you and have a blessed day. Amen.